so hello everyone i'm lok and uh, i'll be talking about uh, exact exponential algorithms so in the previous session uh, vimal had taught some of the np hardness and interactability uh, results and uh, those are the reasons we are looking for uh, exponential algorithms so there are many type of exponential algorithms like we might be looking for maybe approximation uh, so approximate solution or uh, the type of algorithm is uh, randomized right but uh, what we will see today in this session is uh, we are looking for uh, exact solution that is minimum or maximum whatever is the requirement and the running time will also be deterministic so we call this type of algorithms as uh, exact algorithm so yes let's use that term uh, for such algorithms and in particular in this session we will see this three uh, problems uh, three set max cut chromatic number so i think i will introduce three set right yes uh, so how many of you are familiar with uh, max cut problem yes but uh, in the maximum way so in mean cut we try to find out minimum size of cut but here we want to maximize dot those cross edges so i will define it formally we'll come to it what about chromatic number so some of you are also familiar with that so we will see algorithms for all these three problems and for each of the, uh, them we will see a different technique to solve them okay so let's start with three set so i don't think i need to introduce this but uh, let's go over it again so what is a boolean formula in boolean formula we have variables and uh, we use operators and or and the negation operators this is for our clauses so um, and a boolean formula is in cnf form uh, if it is conjunction of clauses where a clause is a uh, disjunction of literal so for an example if you see this uh, p formula then each of this term in the parenthesis it is a clause so x1 or x2 or x3 is a clause and the whole formula is a conjunction of these clauses so we call this form as cnf form okay so what is the satis satisfiability problem that uh, we are given a formula in cnf form and uh, we want to assign some logical values to our variables some true or false values so that we want to check uh, is there some assignment where our formula is true okay can we find some assignment of our variables such that the formula is true okay so um, if you generalize this term 3 to k then in the k sat problem we are given a C cnf formula such that each of the clause in the formula has length at most k that is each of the clause have at most k literals okay and in 3 sat we have at most three literals and find out is uh, is the formula satisfiable or not can we assign the variable some value so that uh, we can satisfy each of the clause in the formula okay so can you tell me in this example what should be a satisfying assignment for this formula phi if we set x1 to 0 and x2 to 1 then since x1 is 0 negation of x1 literal gets 1 right so the second and third uh, clause here which is negation of both of them contains negation of x1 those will be satisfied if we set x1 to 0 and we are setting x2 to 1 as you said so then the first clause will also be satisfied because one of them is set to 1 so x2 literally is set to 1 okay so this is another uh, way of the way of satisfying assignment um so we can set x1 to true we can set x2 to false x3 to false but let's not look at it 
since we already uh, have seen that uh, how we can satisfy this formula. Okay, so any question here about how the formula is, what the problem is before we move forward? Okay. So now the question is, can you give me a trivial algorithm, like the basic algorithm that comes to your mind for this problem? So suppose we are in three set problem. You are given a uh, three set, uh, you are given a, a CNF formula. Uh, each clause is at most, contains at most three literals. And uh, you have to find out, is there a satisfying assignment or not? Okay. Can you give me a trivial algorithm that comes to your head? A uh, combination of what? Mm -hmm. True, false. Okay. So you have n variables, suppose. Then for each of the variable, you can decide whether to assign 0 or 1. Okay. So 2 into 2 into 2 up to n, 2 power n. Right. You can brute force and check each of these 2 power n assignments. Does one of it work for you or not? Right. Okay. But can you think of something which is better than 2 power n, like something that runs in better than 2 power n? Have you seen it before? Yes? Yes. That's a very good point. We will use that. But can you think of something else? Like you have seen it where? Or any idea how we go about it? Right. So um, what she said is, if we have three length clause, then if first one we decide to set to true, but uh, it is in negation form, so that is falsified. Now we have only two options uh, for the remaining two literals and uh, what possibilities we have there. So we will exactly use this idea and we will try to design a faster algorithm which runs better than 2 power n. Okay. So we will follow the simple rule. We will decide some variable, so some literal. Uh, so now we will work with literal. We will not work with a variable assignment. We will work with literal assignment. We will pick a clause and we will choose some literal from there to assign some value. And we will call this partial assignments. Okay. So in this partial assignment, if I choose a literal, say X, then if I set it to true and all the clauses where while setting X to true, uh, they are satisfying the clauses, we can remove those clauses, clauses, right? Because X is satisfying those clauses. But otherwise, if it is in negated form, it is no use for us. Because it is anyway falsified, we have to satisfy the clause by other two literals, right? So we will follow the simple rule. For example, uh, let me just write it down for better understanding. So let's look at uh, uh, this formula. Now, if I decide that, OK, I will set uh, literal x to true, OK? Then in this case, we have set two of these clauses. We have satisfied these two clauses, right? So we will follow this rule that in this case, we can remove these clauses, OK? And look at this, this clause here. Here, x is in negative form. Uh, so this literal is giving us false value here, right? So here, there is no use for it uh, in any further in satisfying this particular clause. So we can actually remove this from this clause and we can write this clause as y1 or z1, okay? So this is the rule we will follow. So I will tell you later how we are using this rule, how, what uh, literals we are picking, but every time we pick a literal, this is the partial assignment we will provide to our formula. And once we do this, we will be, uh, we will obtain a different formula by using this, either uh, remove the clause or remove the negated 
literal okay so again so somebody mentioned here that if the clause contain only one uh, literal then we have to satisfy that particular clause by that literal only we don't have any other option so we can directly set a value and reduce our formula right for example if my clause look just like this then i have to set x to 1 right if it look just like this then i had to set x to 0 right so the other other this this is the uh, basic reductions that we can do just by looking at our formula okay so now let us look at the second point here what uh, am i saying here is if your clause is empty suppose this condition is there then we can simply return that it is a no instance like we can never satisfy this formula because we don't have anything in that clause to satisfy it with okay and the last one is if your formula is empty whatever assignment you give your formula is always satisfied right so in this case we can simply return true so by default we can assume that such conditions do not exist for us we don't have one size clauses we don't have empty clauses we don't have empty formula okay okay so suppose uh, uh, the clauses are given to you in terms of uh, family of sets then uh, if one set is empty set then that is empty clause okay so instead of uh, writing it as a formula say x r y r z if i give you in terms of family x y z this will be a clause and if one set is empty set then this we are indirectly saying this is a clause uh, empty clause okay uh, but we can never satisfy it because we don't have any literal here to satisfy it with okay so by default we can assume we don't have such conditions otherwise we would have taken care of it okay uh, so now let's come to uh, what she was mentioning that uh, can we decide if we set some literal to true or false what further action to take on remaining two literals okay so we will try all the possibilities and let us see how many possibilities we have so consider this clause c l1 r l2 r l3 uh, so how many possibilities we have here eight can we reduce it somehow what we have to do is we just have to make sure one of this literal is set to true okay suppose we start with this guess in first of our guess l1 is true we don't care what is l2 l3 okay we just guessed okay what if l1 is true right so in this case if it happened then we are good if we are moving in right direction by setting l1 to true this by setting this partial assignment of l1 to true we will be moving in the right direction of uh, formula reduction okay now what happens if i say that l1 is not true then what she mentioned that we have to decide on other two literals right then let's move to l2 if l1 we know that l1 is we have decided we have guessed that l1 is false then let's try on the uh, let's try the possibility of l2 so we can say that what if l2 is true this is our second guess the first guess is l1 is true second guess is l1 is false and l2 is true okay and similarly we can guess in our uh, third branch that we can say okay what if l2 is also false then we have to set l3 to true so these are the possibilities we have so if you look at your uh, 2 power 3 possibilities the eight possibilities that you said all of them are somewhat, somewhat covered here right because the first one when l1 is true it is not denying what is the value of l2 or l3 is right we are not saying anything all we are saying is how this clause this particular clause is satisfied right and these are the possibilities that cover all the possibility of satisfying this clause okay okay so this type of branching we will use where we are trying we are doing these three guesses whether l1 is true if l1 is false then whether l2 is true if both of them are false then l3 is true these are our three guesses. 
so uh, we will apply first our basic reductions that we will check our basic rules that okay is any of the basic idea satisfied do we have empty clause do we have one size clause and once none of that is true we can apply this uh, this branching or uh, this three guesses we can try all the these three possibilities so this is my complete algorithm so uh, can you see that uh, um, if i just try these three guesses then if my formula is satisfied satisfiable then one of these three uh, guesses should lead me to right direction right because so suppose this first one is giving me f1 after this partial assignment of l1 second one is giving me f2 and third one is giving me formula 3 okay then we can sh show that p is satisfiable if and only if either p1 or f1 or f2 or f3 is satisfiable one of them is satisfiable right this we can show now okay so any idea what running time this algorithm will give us we can, it can go as much as 2 to the power n so that is the trick here that it will not go at uh, to 2 to the power n so let us look at the first partial assignment here we are fixing value of one literal we are we have fixed one value in the second part we have fixed two of them whatever the reduced formula f2 we will be looking at it have two less variables right and whatever the third uh, third guess will uh, the formula will give us f3 it will have three less variables so in each of these branches we are not reducing by one one we have like this one two and three uh, reduction into in our number of variables right so if i write my running time in terms of this this equation then this is what i can write if tn uh, tn represents my running time for n variable for my algorithm then in first of the branch my uh, variables are reduced to n minus 1 right so my running time that i want in the first branch is t n minus 1 plus in the second one i have uh, n minus 2 variables so it will be t n minus 2 and in the third we have uh, we have reduced to n minus 3 variables so it is t n minus 3 so if we hmm. So t of n is the running time uh, of our algorithm when the number of variables are n. Uh, it, it doesn't depend on them. So uh, yes. So what we are saying is our running time we are computing is in terms of uh, variables, number of variables. Uh, some polynomial. Yes. So I was about to say that I am just. Uh, here i have written this big o but big o some exponential function there are some multiplication of polynomial terms that i am ignoring because what import what is important here for this lecture is this exponential term yes okay that will be in the multiplication um here and since we have we are dealing with three set uh, our number of uh, clauses can only be n choose two n choose three okay so anyway our m is bounded by two n power three okay so since we are talking about a fixed k then this does not matter to us what m is because we will get some polynomial in n okay M is the number of clauses that they were asking that uh, what is the number of clauses we get here okay so i am saying for a fixed uh, k set we get uh, 2n choose k right so for 3 set we will get uh, the number of clauses 2n choose 3 and uh, that will just say that the number of clauses are anyway bounded by 2n cube which is polynomial in n 
okay so even if we are uh, going over all the clauses and doing this uh, partial assignment right then also we are not taking more than a polynomial multiplication in running time so right now we are ignoring that but here some polynomial multiplication is there okay first branch uh, this l1 equals to true now we are not trying all the like 000110 for l2 l3 right that depends on what the running time algorithm will give recursively right so it is a recursive algorithm it depends on what we obtain yes uh what is the complex c what is c uh, so you see that any clause you pick trying this three three possibility is enough right you can prove this formally also for example take n so suppose you have a satisfiable assignment of your formula okay it will assign something to l1 okay suppose it assign true then you are in first branch the first branch should lead you to that uh, satisfying assignment okay suppose l1 is set to false by your solution then you are in any of this two then you can see okay what you have assigned to l2 if you have assigned l2 to true then the second branch should give you the right direction and if l2 is assigned false then the third branch should must give you satisfy assignment because then l3 must be set to true for this clause to be satisfied right so we can prove if and only if that uh, i mentioned in the previous side that p is satisfiable if and only if either f1 is satisfiable f2 is satisfiable or ft is satis satisfiable which is the formula we are getting after this partial assignments t1 t2 t3 um okay okay uh, so the 2 power n algorithm is the brute force algorithm brute force algorithm you are trying all possible assignments right okay but here are we doing all the like if we try all possible assignments in a way we are looking at all the possible assignments of l1 l2 l3 and we will explore each of this branch right so um so let me write it here so then you will have l1 l2 l3 each of them you will try true false true false true false and you will try all the possible combinations of this by taking each of the combination of this right so uh, first you will start with okay l1 is true say l2 is true l3 is true and so on true 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 false and so on you are trying each of these branches but you see that we are not going in each of these branches so uh, if you start with this this one okay we are not actually going into it we are not explore exploring this separately this l1 true l2 true l2 false so for us these two branches are same that we should get in t1 because l1 is true we are not exploring l2 and l3 any further yeah in the future it can happen but that our algorithm recursively will take care of right so you can see this right what i said is p is satisfiable if and only if one of this yes
Yes. I will I will come to that. Yes. So we are not trying to find all the possible satisfying assignment. Even if one leads to right assignment, the satisfying assignment, we are happy. Yes. Yes. Right, but that our sub formula will take care of whatever the sub formula running time is, and that we are counting in terms of t n minus one. If our algorithm is uh, doing this recursively, yes, yes, yes. So I think where we are saving is we are not trying all possible assignments. We are not saying which all are true we are saying if any one is leading us to true we are fine with that yeah. hmm. so we can if we are starting with any clause we are doing this these three branches only if you go to sub formula then again you will only try this three Yes, all the clauses will be at most three. Uh, then we can every time we are just trying this three three type of so our tree will look like yes, yes. So for each clause, we are just trying these three branches in where here we are reducing variables by one, here we are reducing by two, here we are reducing by three. You can keep on going like this by your algorithm. You can only go till depth n because each time your variable is reducing by one, right? So you can just keep going in any branch you go. You will not go by more than n. So what is the height of this tree? You have three branches each time. So three, here you will have three into three and so on. At the end, you can only get three power n, right? So if you sum over all the sub problems that you have solved, that also will not be more than three order three power n. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yes, yes, I'm just telling you this, but uh, we are saving in terms of this one, two and three variables that in fact, this is the worst case that all the to depth n but we are not actually doing that in this branch where i have already reduced by 2 i will not actually go to n i will stop before that so the total will be less that we will uh, so how do you count like re recursively the running time like uh, if you write any recursive algorithm go back to your some scores you would have written some recursive formula right how do you count the running time of the recursive algorithm Right. The reduction in your measure is in terms of that you are counting your running time, right? It's the same thing here because it is a recursive algorithm. Yes, we will come to that, uh, that even that is less. Right, so because we have this reduction of one, two, and three here, that is giving us better, like better than two power n. Because we are not exploring till depth n, each time we are not doing that, okay? So if you solve this formula, what running time you will get is, if suppose you know that t power n is some x power n running time, then this will be some x power n minus one running time. This will be some x power n minus 2 running time, and this will be x power n minus 3 running time. If you solve this equation, the root will be 1.8393. So this is how you get this running time here. Yeah. Yeah. 
एंड माइनस वन यस एट इन टू यस तो यू यू माइट गेट टी ऑफ एन इज लेस देन इक्वल्स टू एट टाइम्स टी ऑफ एन माइनस थ्री तो दिस इज द फॉर्मूला दैट विल गिव यू टू पावर एन बट सिंस वी आर डूइंग अ बिट स्मार्टर वे दिस इज द फॉर्मूला विच विल गिव अस बेटर रनिंग टाइम is it all right yes so this is like some polynomial terms are there we can write it as o star uh, 1.8393 power n but uh, since we want to look at only this in uh, better in this uh, exponential term right now we write this uh, whatever this constant c power n okay so is this uh, algorithm clear okay um so i had one more algorithm to tell you about three set but we can come back to it later let's move to the maximum cut problem so we can further improve it uh, right now the fastest running time algorithm for three set is the 1.33 power n it uses some local search uh, idea um so what we we have seen is just slight improvement from 2 which itself is a lot um because 2 power n better than 2 power n was open for a long time and then we had that 1.8 then it further improved and improved and right now it is 1.33 power n okay so let's come to max cut problem um okay yes. so what is max cut problem we want to partition the vertices into two parts say x and uh, v minus x we are given a graph g v uh, capital v we will denote as vertices of the graph and uh, suppose we partition the vertices into two parts x and v minus x then whatever the edges which are going across that is one end point is in x and other end point is not in x so those are the edges we say that are cut edges of this partition x v minus x so we count it as cut x v minus x and we want to maximize such crossing edges okay so that is the max cut problem so is the definition clear okay so um, again any trivial algorithm you can think of for this problem again 2 to the power n yes so every so if we can try all the sets x right all the sets x which are subset of uh, your vertex set if you have n vertices then uh, we are only trying 2 power n many possibilities okay so then you can just take the maximum which is giving you the maximum count and you can return that right okay any other faster algorithm that you are aware of yeah it might not work uh, it's more complicated than that because like i just want to construct a simple example um suppose this is the vertex we keep in here we sent its neighbor to other side okay i am not able to think of anything but uh, i don't see a correctness of that why it should give us maximum okay edges are right right now we can consider unweighted graph um so for now in this uh, talk we will only look for the unweighted graph uh, you were saying something so yeah so i think this we can say uh, like uh, why it might also not work 
is suppose this is the vertex you sent all its other vertices to other side what if they is they are making a click or complete graph all the edges between them is present right so in a way we are not optimally doing things because maybe by keeping them in different sides if suppose these are say n vertices this is just one vertex then we are getting n edges here but if we separate them say in n by 2 n by 2 parts then we are getting say n by 2 square type of edges we can check all the independent subsets independent subsets of graph um that might also not be true i'm not able to think of an example let's see so what you want to keep on one side independent side so i think that is overdoing things maybe we it is not even required that we need independent set on one side some edges can be present but we want to minimize this edges so independent set is like maybe such thing is like does not exist and we might have to keep some edges in the within sets in order to optimize the cross edges okay so the thing is they are also connected with other vertices right so we have to optimize like how do we go about it okay so let's just move to algorithm parts so all these ideas we can try and maybe for uh, some graph classes it will give really good algorithms i haven't checked that um but for now let's uh, move to how do we solve this problem max cut So I hope all all of you are aware of matrix multiplication. Yes, everybody have seen matrices and uh, how do we multiply two matrices? Okay, can someone give me a running time for uh, uh, two n cross n uh, matrices? How do we if we multiply them? Uh, then what is the running time? <laughs> one point eight. I don't know. That is two point. Yes. right so you all are right so uh, the fastest running algorithm that we know uh, with that we know is n power omega uh, omega is this uh, strassen multiplication uh, exponent for matrices matrix multiplication exponent so this is this i think you said 2.8 right so uh this is what i have checked <laughs> and you can go and refer and maybe we can do worse or better but this is what i have seen in literatures so w omega is uh, strictly less than this number 2.376 okay so what we will do now uh for max cut is we will use this somehow we will use matrix multiplication but before going into that what other thing i want to introduce is triangles in the graph so do we all know what is a triangle in the graph so if i look at a graph then a triangle is three vertices a b c and uh, these are the edges between them okay now how do we uh, can you give me a trivial algorithm to check in the graph if there is a triangle is there three vertices in the graph such that they have edges between the all the edges present between them yes so that is n cube right because if we try all three uh, vertices and check the edges between them we can find a triangle for sure if it exists right but that is again like brute force and uh, find out right but what we can also use is we can use matrix multiplication to find out if there is a triangle in the graph or not okay so uh, this is the idea we are going to use uh how does it actually work is if you look at for example this matrix only say a b c are your vertices 
okay and uh, are we aware of how do we represent a graph in the matrix form adjacency matrix right so uh, we have adjacency matrix so uh, we have three rows three columns for this three vertices and if we have n vertices then n rows n columns and if ith vertex is adjacent to jth vertex then in ij entry we put one so here the diagonal entries right now will be zero a to b there is an edge so we have one here a to C edge one, then B A one, C A one, and similarly these other two entries are one. Okay. So actually, what happens is if I multiply two, uh, if I multiply adjacency matrix to itself, then it give me uh, paths with two hops, two length walks basically, right? So you might have seen this in your algorithm scores that uh, if I multiply this matrix by itself suppose i do this multiplication so uh, let's just try to do one example uh, let's take how do you multiply first row goes to first column which gives us the first entry in the resultant graph so what is the entry we will get here is one plus one right whatever this matrix is so this is saying me that from a to a the path of length 2 uh, is 2, right? And we can actually see it. So this is the entry, which these two are the one which counted 1 here in my multiplication. So what is happening? I can go from A to B, and here I can go from B to A, right? So it gave me one count. And the other entry which gave me one count was this 2. So I can go from A to C. Right? And then I can come again from C to A. Right? So we are not counting like paths where I cannot repeat vertices. That is fine. All we have to count is walks. How many walks are there uh, of certain lengths? So basically, A2 gives me how many walks of length 2 are there from I to J uh, vertex. So every IJ entry gives me that. Okay. And if I again multiply adjacency matrix to A2, it gives me all the three length walks. And, and that gives me triangle. Right? Because if I look at a vertex A, A to A three length walk will always be a triangle. Right? Because I cannot, like suppose it is less than three edges. Right? Then what we are doing? We are repeating one edge. Then we cannot come back to A in a way. Right? So intuitively, this is the case that if we do this multi matrix multiplication, then we can always find if there is a triangle by checking if the diagonal entries are non-zero. Okay, so we just have to multiply this matrix. So first time uh, we took n power omega time for the A2 finding A2. Then so with A2, we again multiplying the adjacency matrix. So n power omega plus n power omega. So in this much time, we are able to identify if I have a triangle in my graph or not. We took way less than n cube time. Right? Okay. So this is what we are going to use. So now for max cut, let's come back to max cut problem. We looked at the matrix multiplication. We looked at how to find a triangle in graph. Both are n power omega, order n power omega time. Let's come back to max cut. How do we find it? Okay, so we will again reduce this problem of finding max cut to finding a triangle in graphs, but just that the vertices will be in exponential in n. So whatever the original graph has n vertices, we will construct an, an auxiliary, auxiliary graph in a way that it has some exponential vertices, but we will do way better than 2 power n. Okay, so what we are actually doing is we are first, we firstly create three sets, arbitrarily partition the vertices into three sets. Like, just uh, make sure that your vertices are divisible by 3. If not, we can add some dummy vertices. Some isolated dummy vertices, just add them. Don't make them adjacent to anyone. Just add them. So that we get each of these three parts equal. So each of the, them should be some n by 3, n by 3 size. Okay? Okay, so this part is clear to everyone, how we are going about auxiliary graph. So these three sets are important to us to construct the auxiliary graph. Okay. So after we have done this, 
we have three sets v1 v2 v3 each of size uh, n by 3 n by 3 n by 3 okay now what we will do we will construct an auxiliary graph by taking every subset of these sets so i will have uh, three parts so this part will contain contain vertices with respect to all the subsets of v1 okay all subsets of v1 here all subsets of v2 here all subsets of v3 okay this is how i am constructing this graph so these are my set of vertices so how many vertices we have added so 2 power n by 3 here because all the vertices so every set here x is a subset of v1 right in the part 2 we have again 2 power n by 3 vertices n by 3 vertices every set y every vertex y here is a subset of v1 so i am just representing them as a vertex but uh, this represents some set in my set uh, v2 okay some subset in my set v2 so similarly this will be 2 power n by 3 vertices and whatever the set of vertices here will be it will represent some subset of v3 this is what we did now let's add all the arc possible arcs between them so every arc possible we will add across not within so within this we will try to keep independent set we will not add any arcs here but every set which uh, uh, every for every vertex in this part and this part we will add an edge so basically we are making complete tripartite graph okay so all the across edges are present now i want to assign some weights okay and i want to tell you the intuition behind uh, these weights is um let us look at our this v1 v2 v2 v3 parts okay and suppose some cut is present in my graph okay so how will it look like x is there and v minus x is there right so now this x it will intersect it can intersect with each of this part right at maybe it is empty set it is not intersecting at all but it will intersect with this part it might intersect with this part so the edges we have to count is the edges which are going like here right not in this uh, this is my x so this will be my v minus x intersection v1 right intersection v1 similarly the edges which are going like this they are also going across and the edges which are going like this they are also going across right and if you look at this part then again this edges are going across this sorry this edges are going across and this edges are going across and similarly for part 3 also we can identify what are the edges we have to uh, we have to count in my cut right so this is the idea we are using and now if you come back and look at this this is some set x this is some set y and this is some set z suppose this was the one which were uh, so let me name it say a so suppose let me name it abc because we already what happened yeah so let me uh, use a b c so these are my a set b set and c set suppose a union b union c is making my set x right so what are the cross edges i have to count now is the one which is going out of a b c to other parts right so what is the uh, so i will give this arcs some weightage okay so for this arc i will give weightage what is the number of edges which is going out from a in the v1 part okay so this will give a1 to v1 plus a1 to v2 minus b sorry a2 uh, v1 a2 uh, v2 minus b plus 
a to um so this cross edges this edges and this edges so plus uh, v2 v2 uh, v2 a minus v minus v1 minus a okay so it is written here so what is the weight i am giving now to any edge xy is what is the cut uh, cu what is the number of edges which are going across x2 vi minus x uh, so suppose this is vi and this is vj and xy edges across like this then this edge i will i am giving weights as whatever the edges which are going from x2 v1 minus x like the remaining part and whatever the edges which are uh, x2 vj minus y that is this part because they are also counted in my cut and whatever the edges which are y2 vi minus x that is this type of edges which are going outside x okay so all these three i am keeping count at xy edge so is this clear you please ask me again if this is a doubt so what all i have to count if i am looking at a cut y2 so suppose uh, this is a b c which one you are asking b2 this b2 uh, inside uh, yeah so that we will give uh, that i will tell okay so uh, from a to b i am only giving this edges this edges and basically this edges okay then from b to c arcs i will cover this edges this edges and this edges okay then from c to a i will cover this part within c part and the part which is going across c and a right so the uh, the edges which are going across v1 v2 they are counted from a to b within v1 is counted from a to b from uh, v2 to v3 is counted by b to c and within v2 also is counted by b to c and the remaining ones which are within uh, v3 and uh, c uh, this v3 to v1 those are counted by c to a okay so this is how I, uh, how i have assigned all the edges the weights of the edges okay now uh, let us look at it that suppose i had idea about uh, what is the size of my cut okay then i can come back and look at the same cut here okay because all the edges that are going across cut i would have counted their weight in this type of edges right then in a way i am getting a triangle here which is giving me same weight as my cut right because uh, within v1 and across v1 v2 the first edge will give me that count so this will give me the count for within v1 and the across from v1 v2 this edge is giving me count for within b sorry within v2 and the across between v2 v3 and this edge is giving me count for within uh, v3 and v3 to v1 across right so all the uh, cut edges i have counted in this triangle so now what we have reduced to if you can find a triangle in this auxiliary graph then you can actually find a cut in the original graph right so the forward direction is obvious we can just uh, look at our cut and see the intersection of x with this set this three sets and the edges will exactly this three edges will exactly give me the count of the cut backward direction is also okay if i have such triangle then i, I then i can just take this three sets into my set x and the edges which are going across uh, the weights we, which i have given to this three edges will give me the cut edges right so basically what we have done now we have reduced our max cut problem to actually finding a triangle in this auxiliary graph 
but what is increasing our running time is the number of vertices in this auxiliary graph are a lot okay so uh, what we can do is we might not know what is the weight of edges this triangle edges we can guess that right we have only how many like um so the weights are like we can just guess uh, what is the maximum possibility is n square right n choose two edges and we can just guess what is the weight of the across edges is and then within this three triangle edges that also the distribution x1 x2 x3 we can find right that okay how does uh, suppose t is my total weight of the max cut then i can find okay for uh, x1 x2 edge uh, what is the weight for x2 x3 edge what is the weight and for x3 x1 what is the weight i can always guess this three because it is again like n square power 3 guesses so some polynomial polynomial multiplication right and then all it is remaining to uh, uh, all it is remaining is to find this triangle of this certain weight so we can just keep this weight edges and remove others we can delete whatever is not useful for us and simply find a triangle in this graph so our running time basically reduces to this t into t cube 2 power omega n by q and uh, this is for uh, creating the graph because we are adding all the possible edges between these two pair so 2 power 2 n by 3 and this is for finding the triangle in the graph uh, so 2 power the omega n by 3 because the number of vertices is 3 into 2 power uh, uh, 2 power n by 3 right so 3 into 2 power n by 3 and in this set of vertices if i want to find a triangle uh, then it is just multiplied by this omega factor here right sorry ah, this guess the weights is uh, what i mentioned here that we can actually find out what is the uh, weights on this triangle edges we are looking for so we can actually guess this max cut weight so whatever the maximum weight is we can guess it we have n square edges our n choose two edges we can just make a guess okay the t number is our weight we are looking for then we can further partition the t into this three edges weight that we are looking for okay so then that will just give us t into t cube extra in the running time and uh, this complete equation gives us uh, 1.7 uh, 315 power n running time right so this 2 power 2 n by 3 is because when we are constructing the graph we are adding all the possible edges between this 2 power n by 3 vertices so which is the multiplication of this so 2 power 2 n by 3 coming from here then this first term is coming because of the uh, triangle finding max matrix uh, multi matrix multiplication right so number of vertices is 3 into 2 into n by 3 right because three sets are there of size 2 n by 3 so this power omega which is basically this number right and uh, we can just take this constant into order and uh, this is what is giving us 2 power omega n by 3 okay guessing the cut size so we have to try all possible guesses. Huh. So t is some n square r n cube. I have just written it as t. t is some polynomial factor in n. The weight we are guessing. OK? So we, yeah, which is n choose 2. Yes. OK. So any more questions here? So can we just take 10 more minutes? I will try to explain one more uh, uh, that we plan to, and then we can move for lunch. OK? OK. So next uh, was chromatic number. And uh, uh, what is the chromatic number problem? We are given a graph. We want to color with minimum vertices, such that uh, if we look at an edge, these two endpoints should get different color. Okay, so basically we are partitioning the graph into k many independent sets, 
right? Because one color should not have any edge within it. So if we have two, three, k many colors, each of this color class is like an independent set, right? So uh, we want to find out if we can color the graph with k colors or not. Okay. Uh, again, any naive algorithm that you can think of. If I tell you we have to color with k colors, vertices. K power n. Yes. So k power n, try all possible k into k into k, k power n uh, uh, combinations, right? So that is a very naive algorithm. But uh, we can do something better by uh, dynamic programming. Okay. So what we can do is, we can, so you saw, right, it is basically finding this independent set in a way, right? So this is what we can exploit. Suppose I have guessed this last kth independent set, and I can somehow find the remaining word. Suppose this is the last color class is x. Uh, and then if I can somehow find out the chromatic number of the remaining graph, right, by doing dynamic programming, then I am good. Right, and what I want to try is how many such possibilities of this independent set X is. In worst case, it is two power n. Right. So what we can store in our T X is chromatic number of the graph G induced on the X vertices. So when I'm saying uh, this left side vertices, suppose it is Y, then I will just look at the graph on this y vertices and I will find a chromatic number of that graph. Okay. So, for example, for some reason I have decided a color of this and I want to look at the remaining vertices uh, chromatic number. Then I will just look at this graph. I am just giving an example of induced graph. Okay. So, uh, here for every set, a uh, subset x of vertices, Tx represents the chromatic number of the graph on this vertices x. Okay. Now, if I don't have any vertex in the graph, then the chromatic number is zero. So T empty set is zero uh, in our base case. Okay. Otherwise, what we can do is we can try to guess this independent set, the last one, which is what will give us if x is not empty set then we can take minimum over all such set y which are independent set okay so minimum over y y is subset of x and y is an independent set and uh, since one color we will assign to y vertices so then we can try to find the chromatic number of the remaining t x minus y right so in my this dp how many entries we have to power n because for every x, I am writing an entry. And uh, to look up, to uh, fill up this entry, how many lookups we have to do is every subset of x. Uh, hmm? 3 power n. Uh, so this will, so the naive one will uh, give you 3 power n. Very naive one. Huh. But we can do better. Uh, I'll just come to that. So as you mentioned, so this is like all the independent set, which are subset of x. So some two power x many are in a better way. We can write it as summation and choose i, okay, two power i and i equals to one to i equals to zero to n. And this should give us the running time two plus one power n because of the binomial theorem. This we can write in binomial theorem and with this is what we get. So this uh, naive algorithm gives us 3 power n just by doing this dynamic programming. But what uh, we are exploiting here is actually the number of maximum independent set on n vertices are at most 3 power n by 3. Looking at all the 2 power n here that we did, this 2 power i, we can actually just write 2 power i by 3 power i by 3. Okay. so. That will give me this number. Summation n choose i equals to 1 to r 0 to n. n choose i 3 power n by 3. If I have just a uh, number of maximal independent set, we know that it is bounded by 3 power n by 3. Then instead of trying all the 2 power n sets, we can actually just write 3 power n by 3 sets, which is better than 2 power n. Okay. 
so this is then uh, you can solve this this is 1 plus uh, 3 power 1 by 3 power n which is this number 2.45 power n Uh, so this comes from, uh, I mean, you can do a simple branching that also will give you that. You can just uh, take a vertex and uh, branch on a uh, its close neighborhood. So basically this. Um, it, so if you look at the close neighborhood of a vertex, right? Uh, sorry about that. This is working. Uh, so let me just say it. Uh, so if you look at close neighborhood of a vertex, vertex and all its neighbors, if uh, almost done. So if none of these vertices goes in solution, then whatever the maximum independence set or maximal independence set you get, you can add any, uh, you can add V to this vertex because its neighbors are not part of the independent set. Right? So you can do such uh, branching in that way that... Uh, um, Yeah. So you can do that branching uh, from the close neighborhood of V. One of this vertex must go into the solution or you can increase the independent set size. And uh, that trivial, uh, that that algorithm gives you the, um, this independent set. You can actually enumerate also using that, this 3 by 3. And the running time also is 3 power n by 3. Okay, so let us stop here because we have to move for lunch. But if you have any question, I'm still here.